stuck at home, including myself. So I thought I would try something completely different. I haven't touched a Commodore 64 in more than 30 years, I think. But I thought it would be fun to try programming one again. So this video is just sharing some of the experience I've gone through, uh, how to get started, what software to get, how to run things. Keep in mind I'm running Windows, so everything will be based on the Windows operating system. Okay, let's get started. First we need a development environment, and from my research I found the CBM PRG Studio is by far the best integrated, easiest to install and easiest to use solution. It's got all the features we are going to need. There's a link in the description, so just download and install it. Very simple, it's just one file you download and run the installer. You can see some of the screenshots here. You can run basic programs, you can run assembly, and it's got some kind of debugger, we'll get back to that. And it's even got like sprite editor, character editors, and various other features we'll get back to. After installing the development environment, we also need an emulator. And from what I've found, the Vice emulator is by far the best one. So just download latest version and install it on your machine. The first time we run CBM PRG Studio, it will ask us to set the project directory. I will just go ahead and do that. I keep all my Commodore 64 stuff in a single folder, so it's easy to find and easy to back up. So while we have the options open, there's one more setting we need to set here. Under Emulator Control, we need to set the path to the Vice Emulator we installed earlier. Just do that here. I can say OK. And then we're ready to go. Now we can go ahead and create our first project. So a new project here. We want to come off 64 project. So next, give it a name. Test. All good. Okay. Say create. And we can close this. So write our first little program here. Just do a basic program to see if everything is working. Okay. That's it. You can try run it. So we have a couple of options here. And we can generate a PRG file. So that's basically like Commodore 64 executable. Or we can just run this current file we're viewing here or we can generate the whole project or we can generate and launch the whole project so generally just run the current file and uh, we try to click here okay so it built our project Listen here you see here we have our program we can just click run and this confirms everything is working the way it should and once we're done playing with this, just close the emulator and you can go back and write more code. So the Commodore Basic is pretty cool, but to get the most out of the Commodore 64, we really need to write our code in assembly language. So let's try create an assembly file here. Okay, so this is our first little assembly program. The first line here tells the assembler that we want the program to be placed in address $1000 in the memory. Then we have a label here. And then we increase the value stored in address D20. That is the same as the border color for the Commodore 64. And we do the same for D021, that is the background color and then we jump back to main so this is basically just running a small loop here so let's try run it and see what happens show us the assembly dump here 
and that's basically the code we just wrote. Um, this can be nice, but you can also disable this in the options if you get tired of looking at this. Okay, so this time it's a simple program. There's no basics of write list. There's nothing here, right? We write sys4096. Uh, that's same at dollar one thousand, and then we hit enter here, and we can see it's changing the border color and the background color really, really quickly. And again, just close it once we're done, and we can go back and edit the code. And let's try a slightly more complex example. So let me run over how this works. The first line again is we tell the assembler we want our code placed in hex address 1000. We have a label here, main, and then we have a jump here, it's jump subroutine right string. So what that does compared to normal jump, which is jump, and this is jump subroutine, that means it's gonna push the return address onto the stack before it does the jump. Then it will jump down here, and then we have a command here, say load x with number 0. So the 6510 processor in the Commodore 64 got three registers. The A register, or the accumulator, and then we got an X and a an Y register. Those are more like index registers. So we load the X register with value 0, and then we load the accumulator, the A register, with my string plus the value of the X register. So my string will be pointing to the first character in our string here, and that's a T. And then we want to store the A register in address 400 plus X. So address 400 is by default the first character of the screen. So we say this is the screen we're looking at here. This would be the first character. So basically it will take our T here and store it up here. Then we increase the value of the X register and we compare it to number 16, see if it reads 16. And then we have a branch here, branch not equal. So if it hasn't reached 16, then we branch back to loop, it means it's gonna jump back here and then we go one more time. Now the X is one, that means we're gonna take the H here and it's gonna store it in position two on the screen here, 400 plus X. And then the loop continues until the whole string has been copied to the screen memory. So let's try run it and see if it works. Let's close with this. Okay. This is 4096. Well, see it did write something up here. It wasn't quite what we expected. So let's have a look at that. The reason we didn't get the character we expected because I used double quotes here. If we change this to single quotes, then it will get us screen characters instead. So let's try run it again now. Yeah, there we go. Now it prints out correctly. This is the string, the content of our string and it returns. So that worked correctly this time. So at some point you're probably going to get tired of writing sys uh, statements every time you want to run your code. So there's a neat little trick you can do here. Just go up here and then go in tools, generate syscall, and it's already set to $1,000. This has to be the start address of your code, the same value you have here. And just click OK. So it's going to generate so uh, address. 801 hex is the beginning of the basic. So basically it's just adding a line that says sys 4096 and then it will auto run when you run your code. So let's try that. Yeah. See, 
now it automatically ran it and it printed out this is a string so it's a lot more convenient so this little example here is quite a common coding patterns on how to copy data from one place to another place on the Commodore 64. So I think I want to stop here with the code examples. I want to keep these fairly short, but let me share a few resources I found very helpful. First here is a quick reference to all the instructions available in the 6510 or same as the 6502 processor. Uh, so this is just a quick reference, this is what we got to work with and you'll get some descriptions how to use them, how many cycles they take to execute in the various configurations. Uh, it's a pretty good quick reference and there's a link in the description. For more detailed description on how each instruction is working, I would recommend using the C64 wiki. So for example, you just go over here search box search for the instruction you want to more information on and you see here you get a long description code examples everything so this is quite detailed and quite useful uh, i'll link this in the description as well and next is the commodore 64 memory map so this is also very useful uh, don't have to read it but it's kind of like a reference so you can go in and search if you want to for example uh, let's search for joystick All right here we go so you need to know what address and what the bits are meaning and stuff like that that is quite useful get some idea how the memory is structured if you are completely new to assembly programming uh, i would recommend perhaps read a book on it first uh, i've linked one in the description here machine language for the absolute beginner uh, i think it's probably a good starting point if you're completely new to assembly machine code so that's it for this episode uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye